Good morning, year one. I hope you guys are well. Uh, it's me, Mr. Tang, your deputy head. Oh, hello. Um, today we are going to be doing a book review. Very exciting stuff. And you are going to review a book of your choosing, any book you like, and you'll email that book review to me. And some of them will make it into our school newspaper, which is quite exciting. And that comes out on Friday. So yeah, that could be really cool. Your book review could be in our school newspaper. Before we get on to how to do a book review, I thought we'd start off with a book. But here is a book. It is The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. We're going to read this and then I'll show you how I've reviewed it as a book. Here we go. Settle in, sit down, get comfortable and listen to this wonderful story. I hope you like it. At the far end of town, where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells sour, slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing, excepting old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you will still see today where the Lorax once stood, just as long as it could, for someone lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old Wunzler still lives here. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the Wunzler, don't knock on his door. He, sta he stays in his lurkim on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkim, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of Miff Mufford Moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of his shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail and the shell of a great, 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 great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you paid him the proper amount. And he hides what you, he, what you paid him away in his snuff, his secret strange hole in his groverless glove. Then he grunts. I will call you by whisper my phone for the secrets I tell her for your ears alone. Slurp. Down slurps the whisper on the phone to your ear, and the old ones' whispers are not very clear, since they have to come down through a snuggly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding grey, the Lorax got lifted and taken away. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swammy swans rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place. When I first saw the trees, oh, the truffler trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffler trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. Oh, look at them. And under the trees, I saw brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffler fruits. From the rippleless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffler trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do, I unloaded my car. In no time at all, I had built a small shop that I chopped down a truffler tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a fneed. The instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked, I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him, that's hard. Let know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. And he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. 
Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, but the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset and he shouted at his father. What's that thing you've made out of my truffle a tuft? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a thneed. A thneed to find something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat, but it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers, for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that full thneed. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. But just at that minute, a chap came along, and he thought the thneed I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety-eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all, built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole once a family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Nitch, turn left at Weehawken, sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all in the factory I built, the whole once in a family was working full tilt. We were all knitting thneeds just as busy as bees to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making thneeds four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbel loops who played in the shade of her barbel loot suits and happily lived eating truffle of fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle of fruit to go around. And my poor barbel loops are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food. I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go, but business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies in tummies, you know. I meant no harm. I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads. Of needs I shipped out, I was shipping them forth, to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. And I went right on biggering, selling more needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes, when the old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, he coughed and he whiffed, he sneezed and he snuffled, he gargled, he sniffed. Onceler, he cried in a truffleless croak. Onceler, you're making such smuggle of smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in their throat. And so, said the Lorax. Please, well, pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about gloppity glop. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making gloppity glop also sloppily slop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old monster man, you.
You're glumping the pond with a humming fish hum, humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary. In search of some water isn't so scary. And then I got mad terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax, now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap and day. Bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring, I'm figuring, and figuring, and figuring, and figuring, turning more truffle trees into fleas, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. In that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree. And we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle, a tree of them all. No more trees, no more knees, no more work to be done. So in no time at all, my aunts and uncles, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke smothered stars. The Lorax said nothing. Just gave me a glance, gave me a very sad, sad backwards glance as he lifted himself up by the seat of his pants. pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hoisted himself up and took leave of his place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. But that was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away through the years while my buildings have fallen apart. I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the one slur, now that you're here, the word of the law act seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, was the one slur. He let something fall. It's a truffle of seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last, the truffle of seeds, and truffle of trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack, and the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. The end, hopefully not. Lovely stuff. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story. That was fun, wasn't it? Um, right, let's go over to a different window, shall we? Uh -huh. Uh, I think I am sharing the right screen. Let me just make sure I am. Um, lovely stuff. So today, what are you going to do? Today, you're going to read a story and you are going to review the story. By the way, I love that story. I think it's so good. It's so powerful in terms of talking to us about how we affect the world. Because in that story, the guy chopped down all the trees. Oh, no. And that ruined the environment. It ruined the habitat for the animals who had to go away. It ruined everything. So we have to be more conscious of how we are treating our environment. We can't chop down all the trees. because Obviously, bad things happen if that happens. Anyway, I have put on the website loads of different uh, book review templates. Here's one I've pinched. I think it's the mega hot one. It says author, title. The author is the person that wrote it. This is Dr. Seuss. Title, The Lorax. What was the story about? What about Lorax, the small orange creature, telling the story of how all of the truffle trees were cut down and how the environment was ruined? Who are the characters? Uh, characters were Lorax, the one slur, but also the animals. I forgot the animals, uh, the brown barber loops, for example. What did I like about the book? I love the rhyming. I love the humor. I love the drawings. They're called illustrations. And then you can draw your favorite picture from the book. I've drawn this. I didn't color it in, though. You can color in yours. And my rating is 9 out of 10 because I liked it. Um, it was really cool. Uh, so what else can I show you today? Uh, where can we find all this stuff? I'm glad you asked. <clears throat> Go on to the distance learning page, find today's date and find special activity by Mr. Tang. I'll put this video here as well. Obviously you found it because you're watching it. Um, good morning, 1C. Today you're going to read a book and write me a book review. Send your book reviews too, it's very important. Not the 1C email, send it to me. At great news at gmglt.co.uk. This is on the website, so you can get it from there. There's loads of book reviews you can pinch. There's a template there, a spicy, hot, and spicy, mega hot, are you nuts, mastery, extension. Whoa, the options are limitless. The one I did, I think, was mega hot. But pick one you like, pick a book you like, and give it a review. How do you review a book? I'm glad you asked. 
Well, first of all, why do we review books? Because it's a nice way, an easy way, of letting other people know if you've enjoyed a book or not, and why. No book is perfect, so don't just say it's 10 out of 10, it was amazing. Uh, say what you would change about it or what you would improve. Um, you could put these book reviews in the school library or in a bookshop. You have to include the title so people know how to find that book. And the author also is important. The author is the person that wrote it. Uh, a summary, so you have to say what happened in the book briefly, or you can expand if you would like to. Don't give away the ending, mind you, but tell me briefly what the book is about. Make the book sound as exciting and interesting as possible. You can give your opinion. Tell me what you liked about it. Give me a reason. If it was funny, what bit was funny? Uh, be honest. Don't be afraid to say if you didn't enjoy the book. Before you submit your work today, year one, can you check over your work? Has it got capital letters, finger spaces, and full stops? Read it to your parents. Does it make sense? What would they change? Make sure it's really, really good. And when you are happy, you can submit to me on the great news at GMGLT website email address. Ooh. Everything you need is here. If you need my help, you can email me at great news and I'll email you back. But you can use these templates or make your own template or write anything you like. Miss Tang, can I just do a book? Can I do a front cover for my book? Can I make up a front cover? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, guys. But don't do nothing. That would be the wrong thing to do. Have fun with this. Good luck. All that, everything you need is on the website. Write me a book review of your favorite book, year one. Take it away and have fun. Thanks.